Hey everyone, it's Cassie. I know it's been a while, but I am back, and today we have a fun watercolor floral. So grab your brushes and let's get started. Today I'm working on some Arsh Cold Press watercolor paper, and I've already stamped out this beautiful floral from the new You Are My World stamp set from Gina K Designs. It's a beautiful floral. I've stamped it in some Ink on 3 Fade Out Ink. This is designed for no line watercolor. I've also heat set the ink so it won't absorb as much color. I then taped my paper down to a board and I'm ready to get started. The first thing we're going to do is mask off a few areas using some masking fluid. I'm using the Grumbacher Miskit. You don't have to use this brand, use whatever you have. And I have a silicone brush that I'm going to apply it with. You can use a regular paintbrush, but make sure that you rub the bristles in some soap before you put it in the masking fluid or you're going to ruin your paintbrush. We're going to apply a little bit of masking fluid to the tops of each of the stamen. This will let us put a lighter color in and not have to worry about trying to paint around these small little dots. You don't need a thick layer of the masking fluid. The thinner it is, the better. So just get some quick dots on there. I'm doing the centers of each of the flowers. And I'm not being too careful about sticking to the stamp, just get the general idea. I also want to add some masked splatters. So I'm just gonna tap my brush and let the splatters go wherever they want. You're gonna set this aside and let it dry completely. Don't heat set it, just let it dry naturally or you're gonna have a hard time getting the masking fluid off your paper. Once the masking fluid is completely dry, you can use an adhesive eraser to remove any splatters that got on the flowers. Now we're ready to add our first wash of colors, which will act as both an underpainting and our background. So I'm adding some clean water to the paper. I'm not covering everything, I'm just putting water where I think I want some color to be. You want your paper to be shiny, but the water shouldn't be puddling. If you have any puddles, just dab them with a paper towel. Now you can start adding in some very watered down paint. I'm using the colors that I plan on using in the flowers. I'll have them up on the screen. You don't need to use these paints or these colors. This will just give you an idea of what I'm using. So I'm adding in some pink and then I'm just tapping in some of the green I'm going to use on the leaves. Don't scrub it in, just drop in some color and let the color move. I'm also dabbing in a little bit of purple. If you want, you can splatter in some clean water that will help break up the color and help it move across the page. If you have too hard of an edge, you can go ahead and use a paper towel to soften it. Now set this aside to dry naturally. Again, you don't wanna use that heat gun when you have masking fluid on your paper. For my flowers, I will be using two paint brushes. The brown will always have clean water, the black will have color. We're gonna start by adding a little bit of paint to our darkest shadows on one petal. Then we're going to take our clean water and pull that color out towards the edge of the petal. If you lose all of your dark color, you can add a little bit more in, but don't worry about getting it perfect right now. This is just our first layer of painting. Now skip to another petal and repeat the same process. Add your dark in the shadow areas, then pull it out towards the edge with your clean water. The important thing to remember right now is that you skip around so you're not painting a petal next to a petal that's already wet or the lines are going to bleed and blur and you're going to have a big mess. So just keep skipping around, adding in your shadow and then pulling it out towards the edge. Make sure that you are cleaning out your water brush fairly regularly so that you aren't transferring too much color into the, each petal. It is important also to remember that watercolor often goes through an ugly stage. So if you feel like it's not looking good right now, don't stop, don't give up, just keep going, it gets better. Once our first layer of paint on our petals is dry, we can start adding dimension. I've slowed this down to real time so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add a C shape with my darker paint and then pull out that color towards the center of the petal using the clean water. Notice I did not put that C shape right at the edge of the petal. There's a little bit of a gap. That is what is going to give it that cupped look. You'll also notice as I am pulling out that color, I'm leaving a hard edge on the outside of the dark color and just softening the inside. That hard edge is what's going to define the curled edge of your petal. This takes a little bit of practice, but we have a number of petals to try on, so it's all good. Just keep going.
Now let's define our flower a little bit more with some shadows. I'm using a smaller brush now. I'm also using a darker paint. I've mixed in a little bit of green to my pink to desaturate it. I'm going to add in a little bit of shadow where the petals overlay each other. I'm gonna soften that out with a little bit of water as well. I'm not going to outline every single petal. That would defeat the purpose of the no line coloring. I'm just choosing some spots where it's kind of hard to tell where one petal starts and another petal ends. And I'm just going to add in some shadows in those areas. Pay attention to the shape of the petal above that is casting the shadow because that is the line you need to follow, not the line of the petal underneath. If you're having a hard time seeing where you need to add more shadows and dimension, take a picture of your work with your phone and turn it black and white. If you can clearly see that your flower is a flower without color, you have enough contrast. If some of the petals aren't very defined, add more shadows. Moving on to our smaller flowers, I'm adding some dark purple near the center of each petal and then pulling that color out with my clean water exact same way that we did with our main flower. For the detail layer on these smaller flowers, you can do the same C shape that we did with the big flower, or you can just add in shadows to give definition. Because these are more of supporting actor flowers as opposed to the main focus, you don't have to be quite as detailed. Moving on to our leaves, I've mixed some brown in with my green. This will give me a more earthy color. I'm just going to do similar to what I did with the petals, but I'm adding a lot more paint in and using a lot less water. However, while the leaf is still wet, I'm dropping in a little bit of pink along some of the edges. You don't want to scrub it in, you don't want to mix it in. That will just turn brown and muddy. Just barely touch your brush to the wet paint and let the pink transfer in and let it blend on its own. This adds interest to your leaves. It also helps tie your leaves into your flowers by having a little bit of reflected color. Speaking of adding interest, you can skip this next step if you want, but it adds a lot to your flowers. I'm going to glaze in a little bit of color. What I mean by that is I've taken my purple and added a lot of water to it, so it's very transparent. And I am just brushing in a little bit of purple on some of the petals, not all of the petals. I'm just adding hints of other colors into that pink flower. This will help give variation to your petals and just make it a lot more visually interesting. We're going to do the same thing with the purple flowers, but using some pink to glaze in. Again, don't cover all of the petals, just add a little bit of pink here and there. We're also going to glaze our leaves with some bright green. This will give it a fresh pop. Now that my flowers are painted, I can tell my background has gotten a little bit too soft in comparison. So I'm going to add a little bit more color in. You want to be very careful with this and use a lot of water. You're not trying to cover up other things. You're more glazing in a second layer of your background. I'm trying to lose some of my edges by adding green where the edges of the leaves are, pink where the petals are. You get the idea. This kind of helps them fade into the background in places to give it a looser look. I'm also keeping the color out of some areas, like that lower right hand corner. I like keeping white space in my paintings. Let that dry completely and we can add in some splatters of paint. You can see that mine was not completely dry in that bottom corner. But don't panic, just use a paper towel to dab it up, as well as to remove any splatters where you don't want them. I'm adding splatters in both the pink and the purple. 
While that's drying, I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. Spellbinders has recently released their splatter white paint. It's opaque and you mix it with water to change the opacity. And I'm going to make it fairly transparent and glaze in a little bit of white on some of the petals. I'm not trying to cover the color. I'm just adding a opaque velvety finish to some of the highlights in the petals. I'm also adding little bits into the leaves. You can see how transparent I have this white. I'm not using it opaque right now at all. You can also use this to help lose some of your edges. Once everything is 100% dry, you can use an adhesive eraser to remove all of the masking fluid. Make sure you get all of the little speckles that we put on there earlier. Using the detail brush and some yellow paint, I'm adding in the stamens and I'm doing more of a stippling motion and I'm leaving white space. I'm not trying to cover all of it. I'm also going to take some brown and dab that in as well. And I'll pull some of that down to create the stems of the stamen. I'm not sure what it's called, but I'm not really trying to be too precise. At this point, I can't really see the lines of my stamp. So I'm just trying to give the impression of the inside of a flower. If you get heavy handed with your paint and you lose your white speckles, once everything is dry, you can go in with some white gouache or that splatter white and just dot in a little bit. This adds some highlights to your stamens. When everything is 100% dry, it's time to remove the tape. I love this part. It is so satisfying pulling that tape off and seeing your finished painting for the first time. Of course, you can stop right here if you want, but let's go ahead and turn this into a beautiful card. We're going to start by adding a border and I am just using a black pen and I'm roughly following the line that the tape made to doodle a border. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be straight. Just give that doodled look. I'm even going to add in a few random squiggles just to really push that handmade look. Next, we'll add our sentiment. I'm going to do this with the Misty because I'm working on a very textured watercolor paper. I know I'm going to have to stamp this more than once to get a good crisp impression. At this point, we are ready to glue it onto a card base and we're done. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments below and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you click that notification bell. If you'd like to see more of my art, I'm over on Instagram and I will have the link to that down below. I hope you have a wonderful day.